Moving out, initially it was incredibly just like rushed. Everybody was uh, anxious to get home uh, and get home safely and everything. But there was also a tinge of sadness as well uh, because a lot of students uh, had left so abruptly that they didn't get to say goodbye uh, to many of their friends, especially upperclassmen that were graduating. Uh, in particular had a really rough time, but towards the end, uh, I think it was just sort of hope uh, for a good fall semester if that happens and that we can see as many people as we can uh, when everybody's back together. Being on campus again, uh, it feels a little bit more like uh, what we uh, are used to do, even though we now live in a new reality and everything, so everything's different. Uh, but it's closer to normal, so it's exactly what we were hoping for. I'm going to get COVID tested so I can go back to Weiss and finally start moving people in for this semester. Like the test itself wasn't really as bad as I expected. I heard people saying that there was going to be a cotton swab, like all the way up your nose. It was going to hurt really bad, but it didn't hurt at all. You got to do it yourself. Um, it was super quick, super easy, and um, yeah, I think that the testing was not as bad as I expected. Yeah, I feel it. <laughs> I'm definitely very grateful that like Rice put all this together. Um, I have a lot of friends at other schools who like have not gotten the same level of just like plan and infrastructure and like detail that we got. And you know, I think testing is kind of really the only way to to effectively actually like prevent the spread of COVID at this point. So I mean, I'm excited just to like get to be at the starting line. We've been like preparing to be at the starting line for months now pretty much all we've thought about since March. So definitely excited to get here. No, I've been looking forward to it because usually the cords stay over here over the summer and we get to like bond and meet each other and like really get close. And while we did try and do that as much as possible over like Zoom, it was kind of hard. And so now we're like excited to finally be here and being able to see each other face to face is like its own kind of magical experience, you know? So the spring, I think, caught everybody off guard, right? All of a sudden, we're sort of rolling along, we're having our spring semester, and then boom, we're in a fully remote mode. And I think that that was jarring for some of our students. Um, and many of them rolled with it and did great, but a few struggled. And I think that at the end of the day, you know, you're taking your classes, but when you're away from your study groups and you don't have the library the same way that you had it before, like there's, there's just something about being here and being able to just be super immersive in this academic experience, right? You can get that in an on-campus um, environment in a way that's just a lot harder to get if you're in an off-campus environment. So I think that's part of it. I think the other is that it's not just the classes, right? When we talk about experiential learning, we mean that through a lot of different lenses. So. You know, we are, um, we've been restarting our research this summer, right? You know, we took it all down, now we're bringing it all back up again, right? And the ability for students to engage in those research experiences with faculty, I think those can be a tremendously meaningful part of the Rice experience. And, you know, I, I know that back when I would teach my research methods class and I would talk to my students about this, I'm like, so you can just take this class and I can tell you how to do research or you can go do it and you can actually learn on the ground in a way that's going to really hammer home all of this with you know to make it so much more meaningful so I think that's part of it and then more broadly when we think about experiential we think about this the numerous different leadership activities that happen on campus and the ways in which students can get involved and those happy accidents of stumbling across somebody right or stumbling across an opportunity that maybe you didn't wake up on a Tuesday thinking you were going to do but then you see a sign or you see an advertisement and you see this opportunity is happening and you go. I think those, the unexpected is just part of it. And it's hard to recreate the unexpected off campus. So I am very excited to actually see people <laughs> in class. While I am also excited to engage with them through Zoom and other virtual um, virtual means, I am very excited to actually see people face to face in terms of how I think it's going to be safely done, I think there's been tons put in place to ensure not only that students in the classroom will be safe because they'll be six feet apart, there's going to be hand sanitizers, everyone's going to be wearing masks, but there's also a lot of investment in the remote technology to ensure that students who do participate remotely can participate fully. 
So as faculty, we've all been trained in dual delivery to ensure that our remote students and our in-person students will have an enriching experience. But we're also very acutely aware that this is very fluid and that some students may come in person and then want to be remote at some point, and we're prepared for that. RISE as a community, we're like a family from the top to the bottom, and I think we, we can do this together because it's, it's, it's like a family. So we care a lot for each other, we care a lot for students and for their families as well. Just, just having a positive attitude. You know, and just, just looking up and just knowing that it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right, you know. But you got to have the right attitude and the right perspective, you know, of, of, of what it is that you're here for. You're here to meet a need to service the community. And you do it in the best capacity that you can with the proper attitude. I think it's really just a lot of people's, you know, livelihoods and careers and futures and families. Even the city of Houston depends on what rice brings um, to the economy and as far as jobs and keeping people hired and keeping people employed. And so even though there still will be a lot of online components, I think there are still people who needed to come back, um, especially we, I've talked a lot about people who are in certain financial situations to where they can't just stay home, like because of their financial aid situation, how rice pays for their housing, coming to Houston is actually really important to them. And also for some people, who are in family and home situations that might not be conducive to learning environments that support them and uplift them, they needed to come back to this campus to be around other students who are also doing learning with them. And so I, I do appreciate Rice giving students the choice and the opportunity to, opportunity to decide for themselves if they're willing to engage in off, in, in on-campus life in, in, in a physical manner. So I think the choice element was really important to, to all of our community. I do think the university has the advantage here because um, they are able to enforce a little bit more rules, um, especially like at Rice. And we have a lot more students that are definitely going to be adhering to these rules. And with the implementation of people like the public health ambassadors and the COVID court, I think it's going to be able to be done here at Rice specifically. If everybody works together, we can definitely get it done.